So as we learn about adolescent development and development in emerging adulthood, one topic that is often confusing for a lot of students is James Marcia's identity statuses. So today we're just going to be going through and explaining it in a little bit more depth. Um, but the main thing to keep in mind with Marcia's identity statuses is that there are four of them. And he said which status you're in is determined by two questions. One is, has the person experienced a crisis? Uh, now, he used the word crisis, which kind of implies something really unpleasant, but it doesn't have to be. It can also just be a period of exploration or questioning, but really thinking about whatever element of the person's identity it is, maybe their religion, their political worldview, what major they want to have, anything like that. And then the other question is, has the person made a commitment to a specific, again, religion, occupation, relationship, whatever it may be? And based on the answers to these two questions, we wind up with four possible outcomes, achievement, foreclosure, moratorium, and diffusion. And so in a moment, we're going to go through each one in a little bit more depth. Um, and where we're going to start is with the two that involve a low level of commitment. So diffusion is when you have a person who has not had a crisis and has not made a commitment. So maybe they've just never thought about what career they want to have. Um, how problematic this is depends on your age. You know, if you have a 12 year old who doesn't really know what they want to be when they grow up, really not a big deal, they're 12. But if we've got someone who is 18 or 19 and just isn't even thinking about this, you know, not that they've not settled, but they haven't even thought about it. They don't care. This may be someone who is just drifting along. You know, they're just kind of taking whatever job comes their way and doesn't even have any goals for uh, changing that. Whereas moratorium is someone who has not made a commitment yet, but they are actively engaged in something. So this might be someone who says, you know, I'm not sure what my major is. I'm going to take a bunch of gen ed classes until I kind of figure it out. But at least they're thinking about it. Uh, or for religion, they may say, you know, I don't know what I believe, but maybe they're learning about it either formally through a college class or just by talking to different people and figuring out where they want to go, but they have started to think about it. On the other hand, we do have two other statuses that involve a high level of commitment. So the ideal, uh, according to Marcy and, and developmental psychologists in general, is achievement. And this is where somebody has committed to a particular identity after a period of crisis. So they have thought through and said, here is why I, want, I chose the major or religion or occupation or whatever that I did. Foreclosure, on the other hand, is commitment, but it's without that crisis. So this is the person who just says, you know what, I'm going to be an accountant. Why? Because my parents told me accounting was a good major and what the heck, it's a major. But they didn't really think about it. They have not weighed the pros and cons. They're just doing what someone else told them to do. So that someone else could be their parents. It could be their peer group. It can be a religious leader, a boyfriend or girlfriend, a gang leader, whatever. But somebody who has just said, this is your role, and they're like, yeah, sure, and they just accept that role. Now, a few things that I want you to keep in mind as you think about these different statuses. One is that it's all about the process, not the outcome. So we might have two people who both wind up uh, following the same religious tradition as their parents, but maybe one of them, it's foreclosure. Just this is the religion my family has, and they've never thought about it. The other person may think about it, may explore, and may say, yeah, you know, when all is said and done, I'm going to commit to the same religion as my family. So they've got the same outcome, but they got there through a different path. Second is you can have a different status for different components of identity. So someone might be uh, in the achievement status when it comes to their major, but in moratorium when it comes to their political worldview. And throughout their life, people do move in and out of different statuses. So maybe somebody commits to a uh, career field, and then maybe later in life, maybe they go back into moratorium and they start questioning again, is this really what I want to do? 
Uh, and finally, the last thing to keep in mind is that what status you'll be in is not just about the individual. It's going to be affected by variables at all the different levels of Bronfen-Brenner's model. And so what I want to leave you with is one example of that, which is choosing a major. Uh, and obviously, right away, choosing a major implies that somebody can go to college. So right away, we've got to look at, well, not everyone can go to college, whether because they have financial issues or they live in an area that doesn't have access to higher education or whatever. But if we were to look, say, at students at AACC, and we want to figure out what's going to determine which major they choose. Well, certainly we can look at the individual level, someone's personality. Do they like stuff that's very black and white? Do they like stuff that's kind of very, um, lots of shades of gray? You know, someone who like, who does not like shades of gray is not going to be happy majoring, say, in philosophy. So we can look at their personality, their intelligence, maybe their health. Uh, you know, you can't uh, go into the EMT program if you can't lift a patient. So something like that might affect the kind of major that they choose. Then at the microsystem level, we can look at things, certainly finances will make a difference, right? We'd love to say, oh, find a major you love, college is a time to explore, and so on. Well, let's face it, it's a whole lot easier to do that if you can afford to take a couple of extra classes here and there. So finances will matter, um, what your peers and your family will support, what they view as a worthwhile major, uh, and just what the college offers. There are certain majors that we just don't have, and if you've committed to that school, you can't major in those things. And then finally, if we look at the kind of the outer layers of Bronfenbrenner's model, so uh, mesosystem, macrosystem, exosystem, all of that, we can look at things like cultural expectations for what majors are valued. Are there maybe differences in terms of what value, what majors, excuse me, are appropriate for men versus women? We can look at financial aid policies, college leadership. Right? They determine things like which faculty get hired, uh, our policies for which gen ed courses we require, or which courses are part of a given major. All of those things are going to affect what a person chooses. So that's it. I hope this has given you a better appreciation for Marcia's statuses, and obviously you can always ask me if you have any questions. Have a great day.